Good morning. This is the new topic dimension of vector space V assignment 1. The definition is if V is finitely generated vector space which means the generators of vector space V are finite in number then the number of elements in any basis of V is called dimension of V. Suppose this is your vector space V and suppose V1, V2, V3. These vectors forms the basis for V. Now how many, uh, okay, this V1, V2, V3. These are the bases of V. Now the number of elements or number of vectors present in the bases, any bases, that is the dimension of V. So here the number of vectors are 3. So the dimension of this vector space is the dimension of V is equal to 3 for this example. Right? So if suppose V1, V2, V3 up to Vn if this is a basis for V then the dimension of V is equal to how many vectors are present in the basis? N vectors. So here the dimension is N. And we say that V is N dimensional. Right? The other examples are if 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. This is a basis for R3. R3 means 3 dimensional. Right? So what is the dimension of R3? The number of vectors are 3. <clears throat> so that dimension is 3. Now if epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3 up to epsilon n, this is the basis for Rn. Then the dimension of Rn is the number of vectors are n. So here the dimension is n. Right? So this Rn is n dimensional. This R3 is 3 dimensional. This represents the dimension. Let V be the vector space of all real polynomials of degree less than or equal to n. Together with the zero polynomial, then 1x x square x cube up to x the power n. This is the basis for V. And now just count how many vectors are present here. Up to this to this we have n vectors and plus 1 this. If the power of x is here 1, can I write the power of x as 0 here? Yes. So number of vectors are n plus 1 because the number is starting from 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? So the dimension of v is n plus 1 here. Right? So this is how we get to know about the dimensions of vector space. So let's do one corollary. Let V be the finite ve uh, dimensional vector space over the field F and dimension of V is equal to N. It is finite in number. Then any subset of V which contains more than N vectors is linearly dependent. Right? Suppose this is your vector space V. Right? And because it is finite dimensional, which means its bases have uh, its bases have n vectors, right? And suppose this orange colored, these are the bases of V, right? And if the number is increaser than n, right? So more than n, if the vectors are containing more than n in number then this is linearly dependent. So if I add this green color vectors, this orange color vectors are n in number and now I am adding these green color vectors which are now in more than n, which are in number more than n. So I have to prove that all these vectors uh, suppose this is the subset of V, right? Any subset of V which contains more than n vectors. Now this subset of V is containing all the n vectors 
which are the bases of V. And also this is containing green colored vectors, which means the bases of V are n in number plus few more vectors, right? So this subset, any subset of V which contains more than n vectors, now I have to show that, then this is linearly dependent. So we will prove this result with contradiction. All right, now since the dimension of V is n, Right, so let, considering V1, V2, V3 up to Vn be the basis for V. And now let W1, W2, W3, Wm be any m vectors in V. Right, here m is greater than n, where m is greater than n, the total number of vectors. This orange colored plus the green colored. All these are vectors in V where M is greater than N. Right? Now, since among these vectors, let's call WJ. Let me select one WJ from these W's vectors which are belonging to V. Now, since WJ is element of V for all J going from 1, 2, 3 up to M. Right? And V is because it is N dimensional. So the bases, the generators are V1, V2, V3 up to Vn. Now what is the property? If this is a generating set of V, then every element of V is a linear combination of these vectors. Now since Wj is belonging to V, which means can I write Wj is a linear combination of these vectors? Now because Wj is any specific element, the specific vector which belonging to V, so I have to choose the specific six scalars in accordance to the Wj. So there exist scalars, let me say alpha 1j, alpha 2j, which is representing the j here is <coughs> referring to that specific wj right so <clears throat> for that specific wj here j is for that specific wj so there is a scalars alpha 1j alpha 2j alpha 3j alpha 1j is for vector v1 alpha 2j is for vector v2 then up to so on alpha and j because total number of vectors in the generating set of V is N. So this is for Vn, right? Such that this Wj is a linear combination of the generating set. <clears throat> so alpha 1 J V1 plus alpha 2 J V2 plus alpha 3 J V3 up to so on alpha N J Vn. So this is equal to, if I take the summation, I get i going from 1 to n because summation is on these vectors. And this is alpha because this is 1, this is alpha 1j. So if this i is from 1 to n, so I should write i, j, v, i. Here i is 1. In the second, i is 2. This is alpha 2jv2. Then i is 3 here. So total number i going from 1 to n. Right? Mark this as 1. Now because I have to prove that the vectors which are in number more than n are linearly dependent. Now which are the vectors which are more than n? These w1, w2 up to wm. So, uh, these are the vectors uh, up to Wm. These are the vectors which are more than n in number. So I have to prove that W1, W2 up to Wm are linearly dependent where m is of course greater than n. Right? Okay. So let C1, W1 plus C2, W2 
up to C M W M is equal to zero. So then taking the summation, the summation is on J, J going from one to M. So this is C J W J is equal to zero. From one, put the value of W J over here, we get Summation i going from 1 to n, alpha i j, v i. Please remember, c j is referring to the number of variables, right? And i representing the number of equations. Always remember this. If you are taking the scalars with w m's, w j is, those scalars are for number of variables. So, if I take this summation as together, i going from 1 to n, and then j going from 1 to n, and here it is cj alpha ij, and this complete summation is on this vi, this is equal to 0, and this is the set of linearly homogeneous equations, right? So now, summation j going from 1 to m, alpha i j, c j is equal to 0, where i is going from 1 to n, because I have already described this j, so I have to also mention this i. So now this is equal to zero. This is the system of <coughs> homogeneous linear equations in <coughs> m variables, right? So j is from 1 to m. So cj are representing your variables. Now since the number of equations is less than number of variables, number of variables are m. Number of equations are n, right? Number of equations are n and number of variables are m. Now since the number of equations is less than number of variables, so therefore the system has a non-trivial solution, which means determinant is zero, which means not all C1, C2, Cm are zero. So judge from here that not all C1, C2, Cm's are zero, because not all the scalars are zero, which means W1, W2, Wm are linearly dependent. So we have shown that these are linearly dependent. Sorry, we will prove the other results by the contradiction. This proof is just simpler proof. It is just simple proof. So it is proved now. So thank you so much.